July 6th. July 6th. Part 1, chosen to proclaim the king is coming, the king is coming, the king is coming. And then Johnny, Johnny A, intro of Jesus coming here is a layout before the testimony. You need to know where I had to go. I really want you guys to. I do, I'm gonna. I'm gonna be repetitive. And then Johnny B. For Grand Junction, I told you we're gonna jump around a little bit. Grand Junction, I told you we're gonna jump around a little bit. Before I left for Grand Junction, it was guitar necks and birds. Very strange. Then I went to the drop zone. And driving out of the drop zone, I looked up and I saw this rainbow, and I photographed it. This is where I found the little bird, right here on the side. See that white stripe? There, that, this is where then, the little bird was. The little bird was a green bird. He was green, and it's called a bunting. And now, I thought it was a female, but then, what? as soon as that bird what? disappeared, that? the Lord said, look at your Go clock, and, and it's it at 426. Well, what if there's nothing in it? What, what if it's... What if there's nothing there? I, you're going to mess with my faith. And it means Ella and judgment. God, judgment. And I went, that is so weird. Then I heard the Lord say, go inside and look up the bird that just disappeared. So I went inside and I typed in bunting into Google Images. So I would make sure I had, and there was the oh, same Robin. green little bird. Robin, it's you at better. Bunting, and I clicked on it. And let me show you what happened. There it is. On the article about the bunting, I'm like, okay, the Lord told me to look it up. And it says the male and the female bunting look identical with their green plumage. Up until the time the males leave, then they molt and their colors change to the color of a rainbow. So, happens when the, so the male leaves. and the female, okay, think of the system we're in. This male and female energy within the host body. It says the male and the female bunting look identical until the time the male leaves, then they turn to the colors of a rainbow. Don't forget, this is before I left San Antonio to go to Grand Junction. They don't hang around cities or towns. They very much stay secretive. And when the males leave, they turn into the colors of a rainbow. That's after the neck of the guitar. Birds, birds. Now I have a bird that I found while there was a rainbow out. And that same bird turns to the colors of a rainbow. And so then God said, let us make man in our image. So this God here says, let us make man in our image. And it's the interpretation of the perception that this God is and to make an image of. So think about the host body system and God said, said, let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. And let them rule over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the sky, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him male and female in the same vessel he created them so when man is created in God's image and woman is created in man man's image then the the female and the female is the is the glory of man in this system here the female is what is the glory of the man of the male because God because God created man 
in his image, to, to look like man in his image as a man, the face of a man, and but hair as a woman. As a female, God created he, him, male and female. So in the same vessel, this is what, whether you believe it or not, this is what's happening. This is what, these are, these are the ones that have created this, this way. Just like the vegetation, considering Cain, then God said, let the earth sprout vegetation plants yielding seed and the fruit trees so when they're saying thou shalt not touch the tree then it's keeping it concealed or or in the Adam Adam is death Christ is life but in the system Adam is Adam is forfeiting uh, forfeits the seed and but in the Cain, that like the like the Cain and Abel, with the Cain vegetation, it's more like sprouting vegetation. Uh, it's it's regrowing, yielding seed and fruit trees of the earth, bearing fruit after their seed after their kind, with seed in them. And it was so. So this is within them. And the earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seeds after their kind, and trees bearing fruit with seed in them, and after their kind, and God saw that it was good. But at the same time, these are literal trees that were planted in the earth to bring forth vegetation. There were two great lights, the greater light to govern the day, and the lesser light to govern the night. He also made the stars. So this creation here is God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female. He created them. Pretty obvious, uh, that's referring to Satan. So he blinded everybody. So look at this line, less the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the what? Image. image of God. So Christ has the image of God. Through his gospel of salvation, you have the image of God. But look at this. Should shine unto them. Okay, read that again. Uh, the second part of verse 4. Lest the light, gospel, that's from the image of God, would what? Shine, be given to the lost world. See, they're distinguished from the image of God. You Drive, could I borrow your... Now, the man had relations with his wife Eve and she conceived and gave birth to Cain which is a production of those two together and she said I have gotten a man child with the help of the Lord again she gave birth to his brother Abel and Abel was a keeper of the flocks so Abel was he kept the flocks but Cain was a tiller of the ground so it came about in the course of time that Cain brought an offering to the Lord of the fruit of the ground Abel on his part also brought off the firstlings of his flock and of their fat portion and the Lord God had regarded for Abel and his offering but Cain and for his offering he had no regard so Cain became very angry, and his countenance fell. Then the Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry, and why has your countenance fallen? If you do well, will not your countenance be lifted up? And if you do not, well, sin is crouching at the door, and its desire is for you. So this is where you must master it. This is a battle, a day-in and day-out battle, the rest of your life. Cain mur murders Abel. Cain told Abel, his brother, and it came about when they were in the field, 
So they were in this field together, and Cain rose up and killed Abel, his brother, and killed him. Then the Lord said to Cain, Where is Abel, your brother? And he said, I do not know. Am I my keeper's brother? My brother's keeper? He said, What have you done? The voice of your brother's blood is crying to me from the ground. Now you are cursed from the ground, which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. So when Cain kills Abel, then that's the blood is on his hand for killing his brother, Abel. When you cultivate the ground, it will no longer yield its strength to you. You will be a vagrant, a fugitive, a vagabond, a wanderer on the earth. Cain said to the Lord, my punishment is too great to bear. Behold, you have driven me this day from the face of the ground, and from your face I will be hidden, and I will be a vagrant and wanderer on the earth, and whosoever finds me will kill me. So the Lord said to him, Therefore, whosoever kills Cain, vengeance will be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord appointed a sign for Cain, so that no one finding him would slay him. Then Cain went out from the presence of the Lord, and settled in the land of Nod, east of Eden. Okay, now the Lord, I heard the Lord tell me before I moved on to finish Isaiah 54, because did you hear me just say all these people that have come against me, you know, I said they don't have very long left before their judgment comes. The ones that called me demonic and started channels, called themselves Robin Hood and all this other nonsense. They're about ready to meet the most horrifying fate they could even imagine. Yeah, Let me prove that. Ready? Let's prove that. Bring it, click. And if you if you study these people who studied these ancient uh, artifacts and just made these discoveries, they'll mention that these people had a genius, a brilliance uh, was different from ours back then. So, so there is no doubt they had an advancement of technology then where they kind of figured out or knew where they could live longer. And five they step. live more healthy. It's like a five-step rollout fence. Now let's look at Genesis 5. With the positive environment combined with the positive. I'm waiting for that. Like I know I can live longer in a pot, more positive environment where you just don't feel like Satan's attacking you anymore and you're living around people with the same like mind that are all telling you the truth and are all looking out for one another. I don't know what that feels like yet in a, in a literal sense, but a spiritual sense, I know I'm not alone. That environment combined. So then uh, this uh, green uh, color right here could be some kind of resource. It's also possible they had a resource that time before the flood uh, destroyed everything. Let's look at Genesis chapter 5, and then uh, we read verse 5. And all the days that Adam lived, so all the timeline, the days that Adam lived, were 930 years, and he died. So Adam was able to live 930 years, and then he finally passed away. Now, here's something that's amazing, is that Four, nine years and what? some people, Four they months? talk about, what about the heathen who never heard the gospel? So Adam died. Now, notice that... Uh, natural death, the first. So this is the natural death is it like to be slain by the word of God, to 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 die in Christ, to to turn to to Jesus. In other words, a natural death. It's natural death. The other one was an unnatural death, right? We studied that one. And that's the that was the digging up. The other one was an unnatural death. The Lord didn't intend it that way. Cain violated. So that's the reason why Cain was punished. Natural death here is the first natural death is given, Adam. And notice the number. The number is five. Genesis 5, 5. So you got to get to five separate, five separate groups 
like individuals in order for the fifth one to sound. So uh, here is biblical numerology that some of you didn't know about before, or some of you do know as well. But the number, number five in the Bible represents death. It represents death. Right. Now, if you look throughout the scriptures. So just visualize that you have to kill, you have to slay one, two, three, four, five different, different types in the, in the, uh, the, the ones that are in, in high places, spiritual warfare. There's uh, no doubt about it that number five has connotations with death. If you look at uh, current people's uh, thinking and beliefs, five is associated quite often. Now, what you're going to hear from the churches is that they'll claim that five is the number of grace, G-R-A-C-E. However, D-E-A-T-H also fits. Now, another thing... Another thing that fits is from May 21st, 2021, which is a 10-year process, to October 21st, 2021, which is also still a 10-year process from the time that the world was ending back then. And, you know, it did actually end because a new system took over. And then now that's going to end as well. And a new system is taking over thing is this is that the reason why they say it's grace the reason why they say it's grace is because of Jesus when he died he gave grace to all mankind but I just gave away the answer there yes through his death we received grace Amen. that's not, not even Jesus you know that not even the Lord God Almighty you know why the Lord God Almighty tasted death for every man would he did did Okay, you feeling a little encouraged, so, mm -hmm. you know, stop whining and sucking your thumb. Just get back to work and serve God. Okay. I know you sinned yesterday night. How Just do you know that? Come back you to church, me? all right? All right, look half decent at least, you know, rather than that you've just been smoking marijuana or going high it's yesterday not, night. Just I, clean yourself up, make se. yourself decent for church, at least half decent and then bring a Bible with you, and then come to church, and then just look at the Word of God. I don't, I don't that's really it. have one with me at the moment. It's that simple. Just get back to work. And then, so, stop so what? Complaining you about sin again, then you just repent, get right with God, and come back again. Did you forget? Uh, you know, that is a good uh, point, because that's really what you ought to just do. Instead of letting it beat down on you, you just repent and move on from it. But guilt tries to trick on there. You know how Satan is. You know how that first initial thought is. It's always there. It'll always be there until you turn it down. But that first initial thought, it always get you to feel like you can't even, who are you? It's not going to, like, who are you to ask to be forgiven? Because you keep doing the same thing over and over and over again. Well, if it's something you struggle with, but you really wish you didn't have to struggle with it and you repent for it. You do it again and struggle and you repent. It just as long as you're in the mindset of repenting and moving on from it. Because other than that, what's more of a sin? Self-loathing? You can self-loathe all day long and be sinning, sinning, sinning in a continuous stream of sin. Or you commit your sin and then you repent and then you separate the guilt and then you move on last week's memory verse uh, what we're supposed to forgive our fellow brother is seven times a day yeah. and then if he says I repent God says you're supposed to forgive him more than you I needed that verse shocking huh well, I'm not like you pastor and oh if only you would know if only you would know what God had to take me out from and what he had to pull me through See, we, uh, when we talk about Enoch, ooh, great spiritual giant, but you just don't know how normal he was like you. All right, going back to the text, uh, we see here that Enoch, he walked with God. Now, there's no doubt that Enoch, while he was walking with the Lord, he did everything he could to serve him. In light of those little things, take those little things. They become very powerful. You're trying to laugh things that turn into big things. They turn into big things. One little raindrop 
you know, and if you fire. give it a lot of time, it can turn into a dangerous, huge flood, a mighty flood. And I photographed it. This is where I found the little bird right here on the side. See that white stripe? There, that, this is where the little bird was. The little terror, for it shall not come near thee. Behold, they shall surely gather together, but not by me. Whosoever shall gather together against thee shall fall for thy sake. Behold, I have created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire, and that bringeth forth an instrument for his work, and I have created the waster to destroy. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me. Okay, again, I just want you to know, I don't take any pleasure in the people that are about to meet the most horrifying reality they could even imagine. I'm a servant of the Most High, guys. Uh, I have... And since I started the night I got converted, I'm showing you the miracles to get just to get you ready for what I just got through doing. The Lord sent me. He said, it's time to go get those shipping containers. I want them to go to Houston. I was like, you want me to get the shipping containers and take them to the ark? I think it's, it's already pretty late, but I, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to get part one out. I'm going to show you at least the drive to Grand Junction in this video so you can see those miracles. And then after I document that, then part two, I'm going to go back and I'm going to show you what happened right before I left for Grand Junction. And you're not even going to believe that. I'm going to do it in kind of, again, a Quentin Tarantino type way where we're going to jump around a little bit so the impact of the miracles will blow your mind. You won't even believe it. Like I said, you're not going to believe it. But it all happened. It's all documented. And it all has timestamps. All glory to God. All right. So did you just see how he showed me that I got him, that they're right where he wants them? up there in Grand Junction how would the Lord tell the servant that he's coming for sure that m me being the servant how would I know for sure that he's coming not like I think he's coming but oh yeah he's coming how would you how would you how do you think he would convey that to me you're about to find out I'm gonna take a break I may have to go sit in a quick hot bath. My lower back is just I jacked want to talk up. Just for a second, I wrote this out, and it's very close to my heart because I was down there, and I watched our police and our firemen down at 7-Eleven, down the World Trade Center, right after it came down, and I saw the greatest people I've ever seen in action. It's back on July 3rd, 2019. Trump was there at 7-Eleven. Then I did it again on 2020. Trump was there, 7-11, 11-7. Now, he wasn't there then either, not on 11-9. There was never a second 9-11. It was not three in a row. Nothing happened at 848. Has nothing to do with the 59th floor of Liberty, one building. So Trump was there, though. At 7 11? You know, Trump's going to be there at 7 11. But where's he going to be at? In 7 11. Best people I've ever seen, including the construction workers, including every person down there. That's what New York Value is about. And so I wrote out a little something, and I'd like to talk about the New York values that we all know so well. The
But that's also the destruction of the temple. Male, female, God created her 